Father God. Thank you, Jesus. What shall I render unto God for all of his benefits? Thank you for covering us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for providing for us, Father. The only way that I know how to, to just repay you is to offer you my life, to offer you my will, to offer you my heart, Father, and to give you praise from the inside. From the depths of my soul and from my spirit, I honor you. Thank you for all that you've done. And if you never do anything else, God, I owe you the rest of my life. For the rest of my days, I will commit to serve you and to worship you. That praises. Let praises rise from the inside, from the inside of me. May you delight on the inside, on the inside of me. From the inside, from the inside, inside of me, set me on fire. From the inside, from the inside of me.
Wow, what an amazing worship experience we are having. Listen, we are still in the house. I pray that everyone is staying safe. I pray that everyone is making sure that they have what they need. But as we are preparing to stay in the house, we got a word for you today. Listen, grab your family wherever they may be. Get them, tell them to come on into the room. We want to partake into this word. So praise God for Pastor Sho, who allowed me to share this word with you today. Listen, you don't want to miss it. So let's go right into the word of God. Um, we're still in the stay in the house series. We're wrapping it up. It seems like it might go a little bit longer than they anticipated, but praise be to God, we never run out of word. This, this afternoon, we want to go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2. Uh, the word of God in the NLT reads as, as such, what can I do to help you? This is what Elisha is asking. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. My question to you today, Have Life, is what do you have in the house? The faith community is still experiencing these challenges, these, these challenging times of having to stay in the house. And as a matter of fact, this past weekend, we had some malfunctions within our audio visual presentation on Facebook Live. Um, I just knew, I knew, I knew it. We needed to, to spring into action because past the show, he wasn't having that. We had, to, we had to get it right. So we had a quick staff meeting to problem shoot. I grabbed all the kids. I, got, I even grabbed grandma. I said, hey, uh, what do we have in this house? So daddy can go on live. We started grabbing tripods and phones and books and lights, whatever we could find to get the job done because the goal was very clear. We're going to use what we got in this house to get the word of God to the people today. In my opinion, I love these stories. These two stories of the ladies in 2 Kings chapter 4 is some of the best preaching stuff in the Bible. So let's take a peek into today into one of the women and see what we can extract. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1 says, And one of the wives of a disciple of the prophets called to Elisha, Sir, my husband is dead. You know how he feared the Lord. Now a creditor has come to take my two children as slaves. If you're like me um, and believe in letting the text talk, then let's listen to how the text sounds. Um, this text tells me, I know you're watching online and I just want to see what you get. This text tells me that there are five things about this woman's husband that no biblical scholar can deny. Um, there are five things. So as we're going through, you just drop them in the chat. The first thing is, is obvious. She had a husband. The second thing is her kids had a father. Um, the third thing is her husband was submitted to his man of God. The fourth thing was he feared the Lord, which means this was a house of faith. Um, the last thing, five, he died in debt. The father died in debt. Um, she goes to the man of God. This woman goes to Elisha and immediately tells him about the problem. I just want to ask a question to have life today. Could God be setting you up for a miracle? I just want to ask the question. Um, are we too focused on this temporary test called Corona? If I could just comment on the test, text and insert her contemporary concern. She was worrying about things when God had already created and sent the solution. She just didn't know it yet. Here she goes. Here she goes. And I'm going to put it in my own text. Here she goes. My husband is gone and now I have to raise these kids by myself. I'm going to have to provide for my kids as a single parent. Um, they knew my husband, but who am I? I'm just a wife of a disciple. And now I have all of this debt and I'm going to have to figure out a way how we're going to live from day to day. Does that sound like any of us? We're creating, we're sounding like the problem when God has already sent the solution. Sometimes your issues are distractions and are in the way of your destiny. I'm going to say that again because it sounds so good. Sometimes your issues, they're only distractions and in the way of 
of your destiny. I shared with the ladies about a week ago, our minds and malady in this case can cause us to live in frenetic shallowness. What do you mean, co-pastor? In frenetic shallowness. This is where we get frantic. We get frazzled. We become unraveled because of a short term situation. Can I just suggest to you that today is the day where we stop living in frenetic shallowness. God has already sent the answer. He's already sent the way, um, but we can't allow our minds. And in this case, the malady of this woman to cause us to live in a place that where God has already provided. So let's keep going. Let's go into verse number Number two, this is where it gets really interesting. If we, if you're with your family, if you're with your loved ones, bump them on the neighbor, bump them on the shoulder and say, this is where it really gets good. Um, second Kings chapter four, verse two in the A clause says, he says to her, what can I do to help you? Elisha's asking, tell me, tell me, what do you have in the house? Uh, the question that I want to ask you have life today, what do you really have in your house? What is it that you already obtain in your house? I'm pretty sure that Elisha recognized that she had suffered loss. Here it is. She lost her husband. That was sure. That was proven. Um, and I'm sure that he could see there's going to be some financial or could be some financial instability. I'm sure Elisha recognized that she had less. She had less money. She had less help in the house. She had less presence in the house. Um, I'm sure Elisha recognized and presumably saw that she had lack. Um, she was uncovered and did not have an immediate head of her household. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the prophet Elisha asked her a succinct, sincere question. What do you have in your house? But this is what I want you to check out, have life. Notice her response in the B clause of verse two, second Kings chapter four, verse two. I hope you're reading along with us in the NLT. She says this, nothing at all, nothing at all, except a flask of olive oil. She replied, now come here, come here, come here. English majors. Um, did she say nothing at all except uh, let's look at that again. Uh, let's just rewind it. Nothing at all except now I was taught in school. Either you have nothing or you have something. What is it have life church that you have already in your possession? What is it that you already possess in your hands? What is it that you already have in your house? I just want to, I just want to suggest this afternoon, this morning, whenever you might watch this, this broadcast, um, was there thwarted thinking in this house? Yeah, was there thwarted thinking in this house? Um, did she take on the mannerisms of her past? Did, was she taking on the thought process of her pain? Uh, you just missed that. Are you stuck in a pessimistic, problematic, and pathetic mindset? Where is your mind when God is saying, I've already given you what you need? It's in your house. I just have a question. Are there strongholds in your house? We call them distractions, but are there some strongholds in your house where you might have to pull down some things, cast some things out, set your all upon your doors and your window posts and push out the very thing that God is trying to bring in. What is it? What is it? Have life church. What is it that you already have in your house? You're trying, you're trying to figure it out, but, but in your mind, you are stuck in a pessimistic attitude and a mindset and everything is problem, problem, problem. When God has already said, Hey, I'm sending the solution. Here it is, a great quote from a book, Ty Adams, Single Saved and Having Sex. He says this, a stronghold is a mindset impregnated with hopelessness that causes the believer to accept 
as unchangeable something that he or she knows is contrary to the will of God. Have you allowed something to fester and sit in your spirit, man, that God said, I need you to get that out of the way. Move that distraction out of your way. Move that, cast, cast down that stronghold out of your way. The very thing I'm trying to get to you, I, I need you to have the fervor. I need you to release the very thing that the enemy sent to you or whatever this Fren frenetic frenziness or shallowness shallowness is causing in your life and receive the very thing that I'm trying to get to you. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Let's keep going through the verses, verses three through five. It says it like this. Second Kings chapter four, verse three through five in the NLT version. It says, and Elisha said, this is what I want you to do. Woman, you're so worried. You're so worried about all of these things. You're so worried about all of these things that have to come to pass. You're so worried about how you're going to make it. The first thing that you say to me is, I got a problem, and, and I, I got my husband's, he's dead, and, and now I got to raise these children, and, and I don't have nothing except, and we're going to go back to that in just a moment. I have nothing except here, here she is given the problem, and Elisha says, this is what I want you to do. Borrow as many empty jars jars as you can from your friends and your neighbors. Then go into your house. Somebody say my house. Uh-huh. With your sons and shut the door behind you. I want you to do this. This is what Elisha says. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So this is verse five. She did as she was told. I just have another question for Have Life. Um, is there submission in the house? Uh, many times when God or even our pastor gives us an instruction, it is not to take something from us, but it is to get something to us. I just want to know, are you submitted when God said, I just want to, I just want you to follow the instructions. He's asking a simple question. What do you have in your house? And now he's given an instruction to her. Uh, verse five and six says, and her sons kept bringing jars to her. They kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. And soon verse six says, Every container was full to the brim. Hallelujah. Right there. You should just get happy about it. He says, bring me another jar. She said to one of her sons and they said, there aren't any more. He told her that there's no more. There's no more jar, jars to fill. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. Watch this. The oil never ran out. The jars did. The oil, it, it never, it never ran out. The jars, the jars, what she, what she was going to borrow and what she was going to fill the oil with, that ran out. But the oil, the oil, the, hear me, the oil of your anointing will never run out. This is where I want you to shout if you want to. Verse 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 7. It says it like this. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the olive oil and pay your debts and you and your sons can live on what is left over. I wish I had somebody that would get excited with me about the word of God. I need someone on this live chat looking. I want you to drop it in the chat. I want you to get excited. God is God is getting you ready for not just enough, but God will always give you more than enough. You should be clapping. You should be praising God. I thank you that I just don't have enough, but you're going to give me more than enough. What she thought was nothing except God made it into exceedingly abundantly above all she could ever ask or think of. This is what I want you to understand from this text. Oil was a precious commodity and multifunctional. Oil could be used as a remedy for digestive issues. Oil. Oil was used, could be used as a bomb to heal wounds. Oil could have been used or could be used as fuel in the lamps. Oil was used on the leather shields for the soldiers when they went into battle. Oil was used in cosmetics and perfumes. There's a reason why he told her, I need you to go and get more jars because as you pour, 
as you pour, as you pour, I'm going to give you more. Your oil has value. So now I'm going to ask the question differently. I'm going to ask the same question, but I'm going to ask it and I want you to see yourself differently. What do you have in your house? Hallelujah. The oil that God has placed in your jar. I pray in the name of Jesus that it would flow. I pray that it would flow. I pray that it would flow and bless everything and everybody in your house. You should give God praise right there because you have enough oil. What are you talking about, co-pastor? The oil of the anointing, the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. He keeps keeps giving you overflow, more than enough, overflow, more than enough. When you are submitted and committed to him, he begins to pour in the ideas. And now you're, you're looking for things. What can I use in my house? What idea? What business plan? God, what prayer do you want me to pray? And now your house is being filled because you have oil in your house. I decree and declare that during this time of quarantine, God can give you that idea. God can give you an invention. God can give you a plan and the tenacity and the focus to produce something that will not only bless your today, but for generations to come. Somebody should give God a hallelujah. Somebody should be dropping hands, clapping hands, shouting in the chat right now because God is not only going to bless your today, Today, he's going to bless your future generations to come. You have oil in your house. It's already in your house. And I know some of you have been asking, you're like that. You're like that widow. You're like that woman. And some of us have been asking God, you know, the when, the what, the where, the how, the, the why. And God is saying, I just need you to know. I just need you to know this. What do you have in your house? What is it that you already have in your house? And, and, and don't, don't say nothing. You were, you were given something and God gifted you the Holy Spirit. You have something in your house that is creative and, 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 and um, genius. You have the creativity and the mind of God to produce. So what is it? What is it, beautiful people of God, that you have in your house. I want to I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you as you are considering, as you are thinking, what is it that I have in your house? Now, this is the greatest part of all. She recognized what she had in her, her house and she went and told the man of God, this is exactly what happened. God is going to give you more because he wants to get the glory. Everything that he gives you, everything that he does for you, it is so that he can get the glory. God, I pray for everyone watching this live today. I pray that you would cause them to evaluate what they already have in their house, God. I pray that the oil of the anointing would flow. I pray that it would flow with power, that it would flow with authority, not just to bless their today, God, but bless their generations to come. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they would take the time, not only God, just to present the problems, but God, that they would hear the solution. Father, we give your name all of the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've been watching us and say, hey, I want to become a part of this house, um, you can do that today. Text us right now at join HLLC. HLC. It'll be at the bottom of your screens. And some, some might say, I've, had, I've allowed too many distractions and disappointments to cause me to stray away from God and I want to get back close to the Father. Or, or some may say, I've never accepted Jesus in, into my life. You can also do that right now as saved HLC at the bottom of your screen. So let's get ready to sow together. I was taught a long time ago, you don't leave before the benediction and I want us to have a chance to sow together. Just like the prophet Elisha told her, now I want you to go and sell. Not only do, does God want to, to bless you, but he wants you to sow. So, so help us as we continue this virtual love, this virtual, this virtual experience um, at Have Life Church. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for believing in the vision and mission of Have Life Church. God is still keeping all of us. Uh, we might not have uh, what, we, what we want, but God is able to provide 
provide everything, hear me, everything that we need. On our screens, there are so many ways that you can give. You can give by Cash App, you can give by text, you can go to havelife.net and, and sow right there on the, serve, on the ser sewing tab um, at Have Life Church right now. We are praying for you this week. We're sending you virtual hugs and love. We want you to be blessed and have an amazing week.